My name is Claire Hampel. I'm a middle school teacher here at the Metro School, and I teach science and English. So we're gonna get started today with a little something different. And uh, this is a little activity that's gonna get us started on our next project. And our project is gonna be called Squirmy Science. The module that I'm doing for my LDC design is actually the design module. So actually creating something that the students decide um, you know, how it's gonna be built. I'm a design engineer at Patel. And so what happens is, we usually get an RFP from the client, which is a request for a proposal. And they say, here's a document of some, that describes something that they want. We're gonna actually take a look at the full project, and this is actually called an RFP. And this is kind of what a customer would come to you with in wanting to create something. So you might be thinking, well, what are we creating? So we're gonna actually create a habitat for our new friends, the mealworms. So you have to kind of interpret all these parameters and all these requirements that they want, and then give them a proposal. The proposal is like a concept, as well as costing a schedule to develop that gadget or widget that they want. The challenge is really to create an inexpensive, of course that's key, right? Inexpensive, cool looking, because who doesn't want some toy that's really cool looking, right? And something that will actually keep the mealworms alive for it to be created into a, an actual educational toy for teachers and mostly kids to play with. Claire's module does a great job of hooking students to the project. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hand out these very creepy crawly things and you are going to actually take down some notes. So we're going to draw on our pre previous science knowledge. And of course they were everywhere between disgusted, amazed, curious, and maybe slightly knowledgeable based on past experience. Uh, but what that did is it provided a foundation. Uh, of experience for them to do their research from. We're writing down on our paper like what we notice and what we wonder, like questions and things that we notice about them. Basically their questions, their own questions prompted them to the research that they did. Um, I just guided them a little bit with some guiding questions that I I wanted them to make sure that they hit. But a lot of students included additional information in their research summary which was really neat to see. I found out that mealworms eat fruit and one of the fruits they eat is apples and when they um, and the nice thing about apples is that they eat food the apples count as water and food so with that we could just um, just use the apple as food and water instead of having to pay for water and then for food after the students individually did research, they worked together as a team to create a research summary of their findings. And I had them basically divide and conquer that into three paragraphs that I had previously told them the questions for that they were to answer in those, uh, those sections. And then they took that information as a team and they designed what they were gonna build for their mealworm based on what they thought the mealworm would need. I think one of the arts of design is being able to separate the creative process from the critical process. Both are necessary, but sometimes it's helpful to be creative first and then critical second. Claire gave her students that exact opportunity uh, in asking them to brainstorm all the possible solutions they think they could come up with. But now, next, they're gonna go through a rigorous and critical process as a team to parse out the different components of their possible solutions to decide which would actually address the need the best. 100 milliliters of oatmeal and one um, inch square of apples. I think that should be enough to... How many mealworms? I was thinking two. Two? I'm not exactly sure what would be a good amount, but the more mealworms we have, the more food we have to have prepared to feed them. Learning to balance cost, schedule, and actually solving the problem. Any engineer would love to have infinite amount of resources and time to be able to solve a problem, but there's always a constraint on schedule and cost. And learning to balance those is really what makes engineers engineers. Learning to do it within the time constraint and within the budget and delivering an acceptable solution. Maybe not the 100% best solution, but a solution that meets all the requirements is always the best. Narrowing down these great ideas, these creative ideas, and bringing it down to a realistic place where we can all agree as a group, or the kids can all agree as a group, what the best design is. And so I actually have a decision matrix, and the decision matrix, again, they're gonna list their top ideas and then evaluate them based on um, the criteria that are that is in the rubric. So they're gonna write up a formal proposal, they're gonna draw their design, and then they're gonna actually build it. I often say that the essence of STEM education is production and the fact is all students actually want to make something valuable and so I was just so excited to see today uh, but not surprised actually that Claire's design module had the students asking could we sell 
the things that we're making for profit. He's like, can we sell it? Can we make money? And I was like, well, when you grow up and become engineers, yes, take the engineer around with <laughs> Definitely. The thing that I think I realized the most uh, from today's lesson was that students are so intrigued to know what the mealworms are doing each day that they come running in and they look for their mealworms, they make sure that they're alive, they want to see what they're doing, and they're watching them so intently that I have to tell them that we have to write down what we're seeing. And to me that's really authentic data collection and I think a lot of times in science we're asking students to collect data for some uh, artificial means or artificial lab. It's just so nice to have the opportunity to actually create real data, data that means something to them and that is really scientific observations and inferencing that's happening in the classroom. Okay, for your data today, um, I'm just going to take a sample of somebody from, uh, from around the room's data. I'm going to write their data up. Well, obviously, you're going to write down whatever you're seeing. So can I hear from a group? How are your mealworms moving today, maybe differently or the same as yesterday. What are you noticing about their movement? So the students were working in teams of three, and so I decided to combine three mini tasks together because they were short mini tasks that could be done ind independently and wouldn't, um, you know, take away from their learning of the whole experience. It also, kind of attributed to the idea that as a team you can accomplish more and a lot quicker if you work together efficiently. So the the first task that we did was the title page. The second mini task that another person in the group was doing was selecting the final design drawing and uh, drawing that again. We have to draw our project but we have to label it and like very specifically so like how many milliliters of dirt we have or soil or oatmeal so I had to draw it and label it and we also had to like make sure our mealworms are alive so if one was dead we'd have to label that too. And then finally was to describe that final design into a little paragraph. What we're working on at this table is we're going to be writing what materials we used to create the bottle, how we created the bottle, and how much of the materials we used. The importance of writing a description of their final design kind of comes with a metacognitive ability to reflect on your your design and see how successful it was at the end. You know, how did you how did you create something? So maybe that someone else could create it. Maybe something that you didn't do so well. What what aspect of that would have you redesigned in the future? Creating a design report is a very critical skill for kids to uh, develop. It's because one. It's fun to actually build it and design it, but then learning to actually take that information and, and communicate that to other people so down the road they can kind of see what you did and why you did and also learn from that so if they want to make further advancements, they can. My final step in the process was really taking a look at what the students did and sharing that with the Patel scientists and seeing what their expectations were and if the students met those. And if they didn't, you know, what could we do differently to teach it in a different way or modify what we have to make it even better? They described pretty detailed how much water they used, uh, how much did they weigh before and after, um, the size of the bottle and container they went in there, and the, and the type of foods they used. So, I mean, I think the description of what they did was okay. pretty good. When we came back to the end of it, he was very impressed with the work that had, the students had created. And of course, he had some, you know, small comments about, you know, the formality of it, making sure it was in a formal tone, there was no I's and U's and we's in it, um, things that we could work on. But for, for the middle school level, he was very impressed with the work that they did and, and the beginnings of the process for understanding how science works. We all are digging deep, we all work really hard in planning authentic experiences for our students and I think that this shift to a design module really just takes it to the next level of just being a little bit more intentional with the way that we're planning things to help our kids think more, more critically. So not just designing once and turning in that science fair project, but actually going back and evaluating within the task still before it's finally due. And I think that small change can make a huge impact on your students' learning.